get out there, really get out there. This week, Rhea and I are going off the beaten path to show you around Capitol Reef National Park. Then we're showing you a great destination to tap into for a little off-road action, especially if you've been looking to test drive a brand new and very unique rig. Finally, spring is in bloom, and the AYL crew is hanging out at a great festival that features all the sights, sounds, and colors of the season. It's all headed your way right now at your leisure. It's next. Well, I picked up this map, Rhea, but uh, we're going to have to start making some decisions because <laughs> there's more that we there's more than we can possibly do in a day, maybe even a weekend. Oh my gosh, this is truly a treasure map. <laughs> yes, it, yeah, it is. Like this. Welcome to At Your Leisure, everybody. I'm Rhea Rossi Booth, and I'm Chad Booth. And you know, being right here in Utah as our our headquarters, we don't spend very much time talking about national parks, and so uh, we've come down to Capitol Reef today to kind of look around and. You know, everybody says, well, yeah, but, you know, they, they don't have ATVs there. No, but, you know, if you've got a full-size four-wheel drive vehicle, there yeah. are lots of backcountry roads, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of history and fun things to explore. So we are going to do a little hiking today. We're going to look a little bit of overlooks. We're going to do some of the fun stuff that you can do here in the park. And the really fun thing to do is not speed through the park because you'll get it. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, cops are out here. That's true. Uh, <laughs> you know, people, people feel like it should be a 65 mile an hour road. But yeah. when you've got all this park traffic in here and people crossing for back and forth for trails, yeah. 35 is a much better choice. We, exactly. Okay. There is so much to do here. We really better check in with an expert and find out some of the things you can do at Capitol Reef. Capitol Reef is about a 242,000 acre park. Much of that is recommended wilderness, about 70% of it. There are a variety of areas that are accessible, um, either with hiking trails. We have the Scenic Drive that runs down one portion of the park. We have many different roads, mostly dirt roads, that actually access different areas of the park up and down the 90 mile stretch of the park. And then we also have different activities that people can do, such as um, canyoneering routes. We have quite a few canyoneering routes. Some of those require permits. Grand Wash is one of our very, very most popular hikes. It's a two mile uh, route that goes right through the middle of a wash. You go into sort of a, a narrows area. It gives you that, that sense of having these thousand foot high walls that you're surrounded by and you get a lot of the echoing sounds of voices and things like that so it's just a really amazing thing but it's a very gentle two miles I think it has about a 200 foot elevation change um, in two miles so very simple. So in the world of hiking which Capitol Reef is most known for this is kind of like the hot spot. It's at the top of Grand Wash, and from here, you can hike in all kinds of different directions. Oh, absolutely, and obviously you can bring your mountain bike in here to the trailhead and stop and then hike it up. That's right. Yeah, this is a really cool idea, though. Be sure to follow the park rules because yeah. uh, hiking is allowed in all kinds of terrain, but when you get to an edge of a wilderness area, bikes aren't allowed, and so you have to hike from there. But Because they're mechanical? Right. Now, their trail system goes, uh, one route goes from here over to the Fremont River right along Highway 24, or you can go up here and take a turn and go up to the top of Cassidy Arch, or you can follow a middle trail that will take you up and connect to the canyon, which will take you down, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of it, right up by the visitor center. And shame on me, but look on your map and you'll know what that is. You know what? I can't help you out on that, <laughs> <laughs> which is unusual. <laughs> but she can help you out on the fact that it's time for us to go to our where to. 14 miles up the Colorado River from Moab, Utah, you find the beautiful Red Cliffs Lodge. And I'm up here today to check out the Ford Bronco Off Rodeo. Let's go inside and let's check this out. Bronco has a long history as an off-road uh, SUV brand. And I've been waiting for 25 years for Bronco to come back. And so I was really excited when that finally happened. 
There are a lot of people who have not been in that community for many years, and Ford wants to get behind these new off-road enthusiasts and help them get the education they need to go recreate on our trails responsibly and to help them understand the basic principles of off-roading. It's this strong emphasis on education and skill development which attracts off-road clubs and education groups like the Ladies Off-Road Network. Now we're seeing more and more women behind the wheel. What Ladies Off-Road provides is 100% education. It's online, it's in person, it's all over the country. We're building confidence through understanding everywhere from spotting to off-camber hills to, well, what is a differential? And where are your lockers? And what, how do you get into four-wheel drive from two-wheel drive? You know, from the simplest things that some of us take for granted to the really difficult things of understanding the entire powertrain of how a vehicle works and then applying that to a trail. But there's also that edge of we want to do it right. We want to learn how to do it properly. We don't just want to go out there and wonder and have that nervousness. Ford resumed production of the Bronco in 2021 and demand has skyrocketed. The user-friendly interfaces and creature comforts are a big draw for people new to off-roading as well as fans of the old Broncos. Here at the Off-Rodeo, the hands-on instruction really demonstrates what this vehicle can do. We have 32 Broncos at this location. We are using a trail that's local here in Moab, rated about a four or maybe five out of 10 on the difficulty rating. And uh, we take them out onto real obstacles, real world examples of how to drive the Bronco out on the trails. The Bronco Off-Rodeo has four locations around the U.S. and will soon open up to the general public. Full-size 4x4 off-roading is more accessible than ever these days, but that doesn't make it easy or any less dangerous. That's why clubs and groups that champion education are crucial. So every single lady across the country can be involved. I go online every single Tuesday teaching. It's a free opportunity for you to jump online with me. Ask any question you have. Just sit on there and listen because you don't know what you don't know. So that's every week. And then we have big online programs that you can participate in. And then our skills camps, which if you really want to learn, jump on a skills camp. It's just helping our women be more and more successful out there in the dirt, for sure. No matter the skill level of the people that come, there's something for everybody. And even those who have a lot of experience driving off road gain something from this program and more importantly, they have a lot of fun doing it. You're never too old to learn something new, and hey, you might as well have fun doing it. I'm Scott Huntsman with this week's Where To. Guess what? We're here today for our famous John Dutton Chili. Welcome back to At Your Leisure. I'm Katie Yardley, and this is my husband, Mark Yardley, AKA John Dutton today. <laughs> today we are cooking Yardley Steak Burger Chili featuring the Four Sixes Ranch Chili Mix. We start with two pounds Yardley Steak Burger. You wanna actually break up the steak burger, and it doesn't have to be two small chunks on this one. So you just want to put some, some salt in your beef. No pepper this time, not with the chili mix. The seasoning is plenty kick for, for my, my husband's delicate palate. <laughs> oh, I love, I love hot stuff. Once it's almost browned, you'll add your onions. My husband loves his onions. All right, you want to let this cook for about three to five minutes, depending on when the, when the burger's finally browned, your onions are finally done. It's really fast, really quick, so, and it definitely has a kick. So at this point, this is where we add our special, four sixes chili mix. Now, if you don't have this, you can use anything out of the grocery store, just any chili recipe mix that you like. But if you haven't tried this, I do highly recommend getting it. They do have a website for the four sixes ranch that you can order this. It's fabulous. My favorite. We'll put our tomatoes in. A 32 ounce box of chicken broth. Yes, you didn't mishear me, chicken broth. But with this, 
I add just enough for the consistency. You can add the whole thing if you like your chili a little bit thinner. You can add less if you want it thicker. I usually use about half to three quarters of the chicken broth for mine. And that's usually a little thicker? Or? I like a little bit thicker chili. Okay. And then if it's too thick, I can add more later. But yeah, it, it just depends on your own personal taste on this. Make this recipe your own. We put our, our drained beans in. Okay. So stir this all up. It only gets better. Amazing chili. So. They've done a great job, and you've done an amazing job. Thank you. Us. Thank you. I hope everybody gets a chance to try this with the Yardley Steak Burger. I'll just give it 30 minutes to finish up. Best chili I've ever had. Can you wait 30 minutes? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I can smell it. It smells fantastic. Ready to eat? Mark's been over here grating some cheese. We can't have chili without his cheese. <laughs> All right, oh, look at that. Look at that. I hope you are hungry. Delicious. Guess oh, what? Let's put okay, the cheese. You put in you there. put your cheese on. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> well, probably yeah. Cheers. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I took way too big of a bite. <laughs> Perfect. Mm. Oh my gosh, that is the best chili. Honestly, I've ever had in my whole entire life. So I hope you guys try this chili, get the Ardley Steak Burger, and don't be afraid to go online and buy the Four Sixes Ranch chili. The best there is. <laughs> we'll be right back with more At Your Leisure. Hey, welcome back to At Your Leisure. Ree and I are just kicking around here at Capitol Reef National Park, and we're just finding out all kinds of fun stuff uh, about the park. Now, this is this is my fantasy material right here. This is a place I've always had on my bucket list, and I haven't come camping here yet. You know what? We need to. This is lovely, yeah. and I can see why. Yeah, it's the fruit of campground, and I was always under the impression that if you came here and camped during fruit picking season, you could actually go out into the orchard and pick fruit. But they said, you don't have to camp here. You can actually get a day pass and come out here, pick your fruit, and then they'll like charge you like a buck a pound or something. It's, and it's like between June and October, which is, that makes sense, right? That's the, the cherries, harvesting. Cherries through apples, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, they, they just, it, uh, what I love about it is you can bring the whole family. It's like a really fun thing to do. Think, think about how many kids, <laughs> even some of you who have five-year-olds who don't know that a cherry comes from a tree. There you go. They think it's at the grocery, right? Right. So great. this is a great connection, which is what the homestead is all about. And, uh, and, and the homestead that's here, the Gifford Homestead, has a whole history of its own. Fruit orchards are an amazing attribute of this national park. It's the largest uh, historic orchard system in the National Park Service. And then here in the Fruita area, which is where we are right now, which is where park headquarters is, have our visitor center, we have a campground here. And we also have two first come first serve campgrounds, one up in the north district of the park, up in Cathedral Valley, the other down in the water pocket fold district called Cedar Mesa Campgrounds, a little bit more rustic experience at Cathedral Valley and at Cedar Mesa Campground. Those are just dry campgrounds. We have uh, vault toilets and that's and picnic tables and that's the amenities that we have out in there. If you find the camping arrangements inside the park to be just a little bit too primitive, even though they are pretty cool, just a few miles to the west, maybe what, 10 minutes out of the park, is the, um, is the Wonderland RV Park. It's one of our favorite places here in Torrey. And, and it's just got everything. Oh yeah, it's great. They got like little hound dogs running around and baby goats and they got cool little cabins like a sheep herder cabin. I mean, it's so cozy. Wouldn't that be a goat herder cabin? Yeah, today it would be. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, it's fabulous. And then right up the hill is the Broken Spur, which is a beautiful lodge with a, a, a great steak steakhouse and oh. a great view it's got a vista oh. out over into the into the park so it's it's pretty cool i mean it's walking distance it's gorgeous right okay well right now it's time for us to move away from here and on to this week's along the way a colorful spectacle to celebrate the start of spring the thanksgiving point tulip festival imports thousands of bulbs from holland 
in order to bring this vivid event to Ashton Gardens. We plant over 300,000 tulip bulbs for our tulip festival. It's starting to get warm and people are just excited to be outside and able to walk around and just, yeah, kind of just see all the, all the nice flowers that are on display. Throughout our festival, we're gonna have music on the weekends. The live performances, vibrant flowers, and the incredible landscaping brings joy to everyone who wanders into the grounds. Ashton Gardens is a 10 out of 10 place to come, and the Tulip Festival only adds on to that. It's, I love working here. I have a good time, guests have a good time. Exploring the assorted paths through 15 themed gardens, you can keep the family entertained and fueled up. We have food trucks and vendors so you can do some shopping. This 50-acre peaceful oasis in the city is a living work of art. As the artist in residence for the Thanksgiving Point Tulip Festival, I get to spend my days here painting and it's really what I love to do. I go throughout the garden, I take my easel and my paints, and sometimes my sketchbook, and I try to record as much of the beauty as I can while I'm here. I love Tulip so much that my Instagram handle is Tulip Painter, and my website is also tulippainter.com. With so many enchanting spaces to enjoy, it's a perfect day's adventure for the whole family. Oh, I, I think it's really great for families, especially young children. They can get out and run around and burn up all that energy and, you know, the parents and grandparents can kind of keep an eye on them and let them have fun too, you know? So it's, it's really a nice experience for a family. You see a lot of people having picnics and, you know, having beverages and just enjoying the day. There are a variety of enthralling water features, including the largest man-made waterfall in the Western Hemisphere. Flowers aren't the only ones enjoying all the water. I came here because my brother loves this festival, so we go here every year. Um, it's been really beautiful, and I really love it here. The waterfalls and like the lakes, that's my favorite part, and feeding the fish is really fun. Whether it's a breath of fresh air, an eyeful of the ornamental displays, or some quality family time, the gardens are a wonderful place to recharge. I love watching people slow down and look at the flowers and I, I think it's amazing to see people from all walks of life old and young and and they they stop and they you know they call their loved ones over and they say look at this flower and they're they're mesmerized by the beauty and I love I love that Thanksgiving point helps people slow down and and just enjoy nature and, and enjoy the beauty and the beauty will be on display for one more week. If you miss that, you can buy some bulbs and take the wonder home with you. For this week's Along the Way, I'm Will Oxley. In a historical perspective, I love the simple names of the past. We are at a landmark out here. No, it's not called Old Truck with an Eyeball on the back of it. It's called Waterwell Springs. And it's pretty straightforward. There's a spring here, you can see, because the water is naturally flowing into this trough. The well is right over there. And that's how they name things out in the desert. Now, we are on a route north of Highway 24. It's a big loop that kind of connects Loa over to the other side, the uh, Caneville side of Capitol Reef. It's called the Cathedral Valley Road, and this is one of the stops along the way. It's not a highway, it's a byway, because we've seen one car. But we're gonna keep going. Right now, why don't you take a look at next week's show. Next week, Chad and I are going to experience the finer side of camping as we check out some great glamping options at East Canyon State Park. The only way Rio would have it. 
Then, Reese Stein is back to show you a great camp in the Mill Creek Canyon area that has a wide variety of activities from archery to rock climbing. Finally, we're joining the folks from Green River at a great new dirt bike rally that welcomes riders of all ages and skill levels to participate in all the fun. Now let's take a look at our calendar of events. First up, the Beaver County ATV Jamboree is taking place next week from May 10th through the 13th and is sure to be a great time for the whole family, so come on down and ride. If you're looking for something a bit more extreme, then check out the side-by-side -side adventure Rally on the Rocks, where Curtis is going to be throwing down the challenge to Chad, and that'll be May 11th through the 13th. Ooh, I'm a little bit scared. I would be. Uh, yeah, it's going to get you plenty of rock crawling opportunities, so be sure to get down there and see what happens. Also, be sure to check out the all-new AYLTV.com website and stay up to date on all the great outdoor events coming up throughout the year. Well, <laughs> next week's show looks great, and I bet you thought we were going to be at an overlook. But that's not the way we roll at At Your Leisure, as you can see. Fortunately, <laughs> as you can see, we literally are with Sheriff Jensen. This is the Wayne County Sheriff and this awesome, awesome guy, Gary Bryan. He, he'll tow you out of anything. Yes, we broke down. Surprise, surprise. But the good news is in the back, now this is a serious reminder. No, it is. If we had not had access to a spot that could give exact GPS, we'd still be up there and we might be there next week for the show. But because we had a way to communicate. Yeah, with the sat phone. With, and, a, with yeah. a, little, a little satellite spot, we were able to get help precisely to where we were and, uh, and and also, I have a chance to solve those warrants that are out for my parking tickets. <laughs> <laughs> but right, Brian? <laughs> yeah, they're his, they're not mine, believe me. But you were just, saying. Just, just remember, well, how often do you do this, Gary? In the summertime, regularly. Really? Yeah. yeah. You've got it down to like a memorized routine? Yeah, mostly. <laughs> Well, oh, you guys are both studs. I'm telling you, I, I was like saying my prayers today. Please have somebody rescue us. Brian's Auto is who's going to tow you out. Yep. And then we had an escort with Sheriff Jensen, so it was like really cool. It was. <laughs> <laughs> well, just remember, like we say at every show, there's adventure around every bend. And boy, did we prove it today. Oh, yeah. You just got to get out there and create your own adventure at, at your, your leisure. leisure. We'll see you guys later. How long is it going to take us to get to town? Oh, 45 minutes. Okay. Perfect.